day here, guys. Blind pick, change my mind versus DHDK Nation. You guys saw the Twitch chat votes if you want to vote for who your favorite team here is. Acrolos actually coming out on his Windwalker month for, I believe, the first time we've seen this year. Yeah, potentially. This is interesting for me. I always thought, well, what we've been hearing is Rogue Mage Druid is the answer to Demon Hunter Death Knight. You just go on the healer, you crowd control the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight, and you're able to basically whittle them down and eventually take down the healer. That's what we've been hearing from all these European teams as the answer, but Acro's going to be subbing in on that Windwalker Monk, like you mentioned, Adrian. I'm curious to see what their strategy is. Are they just going to go after the DPS in this matchup? Looks like for now, they're going to be sitting on Joel, trying to pressure down this death line. They've already managed to squeak out the Icebound Fortitude very early on in exchange for that touch of death. I think Change My Mind know that DHDK Nation is a Resto Shaman only variant of this composition, and the strategy of tunneling down the Druid works when it is a Druid, but if it is a Shaman with all the Spectre Recovery, Honor Talents, and Pack Spirit Azerite traits, I don't necessarily agree that the same strategy works against the Shaman variant, and perhaps this composition that is a lot more durable, the Windwalker is a lot more self-sustaining than the Assassination Rogue, will allow Minpoike to spend less mana, so that later in the game, into deep dampening, they can win off of things like Crowd Control on the Shaman, whether it be Counterspell, Polymorph, something like this in this situation, target down the Death Knight and, and try and kill them. I think that's overall a safer strategy. Uh, coming from Change My Mind in terms of this composition, but of course, Akrozal's debut on the Windwalker Monk could leave some potential openings for DHDK Nation. Yep, but he's just going to be trying to limit Joel as much as possible in this matchup, sitting on him, using the Disable, the Disabling Root, in order to keep him off Fried Kitty, allowing Fried Kitty to build up his damage, get out some consistent pressure and basically force Joel in this situation where he has to train down a Frost Mage, which isn't really the easiest thing. You can see Acro, he's playing the grapple weapon when Joel wants to get off those death strikes. When Fried Kitty Acro throw out that burst damage, he can disarm Joel and really limit his self-healing capabilities in this matchup. And I think it was a smart choice. Burly in crowd control, but fused in there to remove it with the reverse magic. Minpoike gets follow-up. Two members in crowd control, three versus one. Joel exchanges the anti-magic shield right when a Gladiator's Maledict was activated, negating its effect. A very good exchange of cooldowns on Joel's part while his team was crowd controlled. Now it looks like they're trying to bring the momentum towards Change My Mind, but Fried Kitty anticipated it. Already having Temporal Shield activated, absorbed their entire attack, healing himself back to full, and now evening the score. Mana is even, and that is not what you want to see as the Demon Hunter Death Knight. You want to have a significant lead, and, and Poike's main point of contention. Also, bringing in the Windwalker allows you to dispel diseases as opposed to the Rogue, so it even sets you up for Minpoike drinking in this situation. I think overall, the Windwalker lets the Druid regenerate mana much longer. This composition is more likely to win in a late game than the Rogue version, uh, and for that reason, I think changed my mind to relying on this as opposed to the all-in kill the healer strategy. Perhaps, though, we will see them go back to the Rogue Mage should Burly play a Druid, but I think that's unlikely. Yeah, I feel like the main strategy for Change My Mind is they just want to bring the game as long as possible. Eventually, Joel, his self-healing is not going to be very high, and really, the uptime of Joel and Fuse so far in this matchup has been incredibly low. Acro with the Ring of Peace is going to be able to protect Fried Kitty as well. He has an ability called Tiger's Lust. He can use that. It's a short cooldown. I think it's 24 seconds. Every 24 seconds, he can use that to remove a snare off of Fried Kitty, allow him to sort of sprint away. And you'll see that in this matchup. He can remove the Chains of Ice. It allows him to sort of get a little bit of distance in this match. And all these tools together make it really difficult for the Death Knight, for the Demon Hunter, to have high uptime on the Mage, enough uptime to pressure down in Poike's mana. And the problem is, Fuse, what he needs to be doing in this matchup is consistently running after Minpoike, landing the mana rifts. That's the main win condition for the Demon Hunter, is mana rifting as consistently as possible, getting the enemy healer out of mana, and that's when your pressure starts really adding up. But until that point, with Minpoike sitting at full mana, being able to drink as much as he wants, I don't really see the opening for DHDK Nation. I feel like slowly but surely they're going to get whittled down until eventually they lose. I mean, Fuse is not even attempting to mana rift. They're just trying to win with damage on a fried kitty, and so far that hasn't been working whatsoever. Minpoike is rotating cooldowns with Temporal Shield and Iron Bark, slipping away and drinking when Acro removes his diseases so that he can get into stealth and not have that damage over time effect break his drink and then able to keep his mana on par with the Shaman. And then later into Dampening, sure, the Death Knight is basically an immortal god at this point in the game, but in Dampening, when the healing reduces Death Strike's effectiveness, the Death Knight then just becomes a liability that can't move around the map very well. And that's when the Mage and the Windwalker will fully exploit the limitations of the Death Knight and ultimately take him down. So 
the HDK Nation certainly need to change their strategies. We see Houston starting to go after Minpoike now with a stun lock mana rift combination and Likely we'll see Fuston chase Minpoike for the rest of the match. I think Joe should also send his pet, the ghoul, after Minpoike as well, just to make sure that even if the Death Knight or the Demon Hunter gets crowd controlled, that there still will be a member of the team, whether it be a pet or a player attacking Minpoike, keeping him in combat and denying him from drinking. Now they've taken about five minutes to do this strategy, so Minpoike's mana is in a healthy margin right as dampening has started. So this is not a good position if you're a DHDK Nation. This is certainly not the win condition unless they have something else in mind where Burley somehow holds on to his mana and they go for an all-in purge attempt, but that can easily be negated if you haven't gotten any ice blocks deep into dampening or a touch of karma. These cooldowns will prevent an all-in from a shaman purging almost guaranteed. So on mana, they're not ahead. Minpoike sitting down to drink. Ring of Peace is denying Fuston from getting over to Minpoike. Beautifully placed by Acro. And Change My Mind continue to play for the safe strategy. And so long as they don't make any mistakes, I mean, this is just an easy win for them. Well, the only thing they can really get done is try to get Minpoike out of mana, but it's just not working out so far. 7% dampening. I really feel like as the game goes on, Change My Mind have more and more of an advantage. Joel, his self feeling is going to be limited. Burly, as a Restoration Shaman, all of a sudden you have to cast out a lot more heals. You can't rely on the Earth Shield and the Riptide nearly as much. You're going to have to start spamming out healing waves in order to actually keep your teammates alive. And that's when Fried Kitty can start landing interrupts, get him further and further behind. And that Windwalker damage, consistent damage Acro brings to the table is really going to start adding up. Earth Elementals can be dropped down by Burly. And the reason he does that is to keep Minpoike in combat. At this point in the game, he realizes this is their time where they're going to be doing damage they're going to be building momentum and as long as Minpoike is not able to sneak away and drink because of that earth elemental they can start developing a lead but unfortunately there's just been no mana rifts there's no mana rifts on Minpoike he's positioned very far away inevitably he will be able to drink this could actually just be Joel falling down at this point darkness coming in from Fuse one of the only things keeping Joel alive through that touch of death and this is a scary moment for DHDK Nation you know, grapple weapon as well, a great tool against both a Death Knight and a Demon Hunter, removing the weapon of the target cast it on, and obviously a Death Knight and a Demon Hunter need their weapons to attack, and thus when they attack, they heal themselves. So denying them from attacking also denies them from healing themselves. So I like that honor talent choice from Acro. It's certainly a win condition before dampening, and it's definitely a win condition in dampening. At this point in time, the only thing I see possible from DHDK Nation is Burly starts using Flame Shocks, Lava Bursts, and Purges to try and overwhelm Change My Mind with damage onto a single target. And I mean, he is lobbing out a couple of Lava Bursts at Fried Kitty, but Houston is now crowd controlled by Minpoike in the back line. We're getting closer to that 40%. I would say that's where Death Knights are just almost certainly guaranteed to die when facing a Frost Mage melee composition. So as long as Minpoike is still above zero mana, by the time we get to that 40% mark, Joel on the Death Knight basically just falls over like a wet noodle. Burley's pushing up with his team, popping Ascendance, trying to maximize the healing output from it based on its positioning and getting his team topped off before a push. So I do see some purges being casted. They're pressuring for the Ice Block with Lava Burst, and this could be a strategy that changed my mind may not have been ready for if they can get enough damage out. The thing is, is it costs a lot of mana to purge. So if Burly goes for an all-in right now and they don't get the kill, then they can't do it later in Dampening where potentially it could have netted a kill. So everything will come down to the wire here and, de and depend on when Burly decides to commit his resource for the kill. If he picks the wrong time, he's going to run out of mana and they're not going to be able to push the team over. But if he doesn't go in time before the Death Knight gets overwhelmed, then they're going to lose. So there's a very specific period of time I'm going to be guessing as to whether or not it's between 35 and 45% dampening. Somewhere right around where the Death Knight is almost guaranteed to die. At that same point, the Shaman also needs to attack. This is a good push for an Ice Block right before we get to 30%. The pressure from DHDK Nation is suddenly so much higher. But Joel is Grapple Weapon. He can't use Death Strike. He desperately wants to use that Runic Power to start healing himself back up. Spirit Link Totem going to be traded out. So Burly playing a lot more preemptive in his cooldown usage, trying to stay ahead of the damage and potentially overwhelm Fried Kitty, and this is what they're going for. So he's got about enough mana to push for a kill before Hypothermia or enough mana to get a second Ice Block, and then after that, I think Burly's going to be out of mana, and we're going to see Joel going down. So such a difficult position to be in as DHDK Nation, unless Burly actually is the one to find a drink. Yeah, Minpoike going for a drink. Houston trying to shut him down. Minpoike with a beautiful bash cyclone on a fuse. Now, Joel, he's left all alone. Burley really doesn't have too much to work with. Earthen Shield Totem or Earthen Wall Totem gets dropped down. 
Joel still throwing out a few death strike, but at 30% dampening, those aren't going to be nearly as powerful. Fried Kitty and Acro can really start putting out a lot of pressure. Burly forced to trinket out of a cyclone. Joel still going to be in some trouble. Fist of Fear coming in from Acro. Anti magic shell, but after that, Joel has really nothing left, Sid. There's darkness from Fuston, so if Change My Mind can crowd control the Demon Hunter, prevent him from using darkness on top of Joel, then they easily kill him. But we're getting that 40% mark, and they have to use darkness before we even get there. Mana is even on both sides. Not what you want to see is the Shaman team with the Demon Hunter. You definitely want to be significantly ahead at this point in time, still with one ice block remaining. So if DHDK Nation make a big push, all they're going to do is get an ice block or a touch of karma. And then immediately after that, Change My Mind will turn the fight in their own favor and overwhelm the Death Knights. So at this point, it's basically checkmate. I mean, Minpoike has just been getting drinks. DHDK Nation have been playing sloppy. They haven't been playing for their win condition strategy whatsoever. I think they were banking on an all-in purge attack, but that's now been thwarted as well due to the fact that they haven't built any advantages in terms of mana or momentum prior this is a big push from dk and DK nation uh -oh. but touch of death is about to go off one second before icebound fortitude one second before anti-magic shield big touch of death hit joel barely holds on three percent till that death marker for the death knight the shaman's in a cyclone grapple weapon denies the death strike acrolog goes for fist of fury just for damage at this point and joel is unable to heal at this point in time and will be falling down. Change my mind with a safe strategy and clean play. Which means this could be a fitting penultimate resting place. A fitting what? Penultimate, second to last. Okay, you're using too <laughs> big of words on the desk today here. Game two, change my mind, looking like they're gonna be able to 3-0 DHDK Nation unless they can show some diversity in their compositions or potentially a different strategy here. I was anticipating something like hook point and chasing him and Poike down and stopping him from drinking. Rins of Lordaeron is still a good map to drink. It's very wide open spaces, a long distance from each back of the starting room, so Minpoike will be able to escape. I suppose maybe they're going for an all-in on Minpoike, trying to chase down the healer, having seen how that dampening game played out earlier, and that looks like they want to do it, but Minpoike knows where to go, right to the back of the starting room. If the Death Knight and Demon Hunter overextend at a line of sight down the staircase, the Shaman will be pulled into midfield and then exposed to the mage's crowd control. And at that point, Fried Kitty will develop a lot of momentum being left open that long. Burly casting some hexes on the mage, but they're being broken instantly by the DPS members, so I'm not entirely sure what the strategy there. Although DHDK Nation are now switching their attention to the mage, this could be a way to develop pressure, ping-ponging between the druid and the mage, scaring Minpoike far away from the fight by targeting him. And then when he's ran too far away, switching back to the mage and constantly switching targets to try and expend the druid's mana twice as fast. Or splitting damage is also an effective strategy against the Druid, which is what Fuston is doing at the moment, but it decides to get off of Minpoike and actually just let him Cyclone Burly. Burly's Glider's Medallion out of the way very early on, as well as the Anti-Magic Shield, so a bit of mistakes here from DHDK Nation, and with that Grapple Weapon and the Turbo Fists, you can get a kill on the Death Knight before dampening if you make some very big mistakes. There's a lot of pressure right now onto Joel. This could easily be a Spirit Link Totem. The Riptides are over. Ring of Peace is bouncing Burly away from Joel. If they can deny some Death Strikes, Joel's marching over, gets one on the Fried Kitty, and now should be all right. But a close call, significant cooldowns forced early on, and you can tell that Changed My Mind are just on a different level. Yeah, Changed My Mind right now, They're playing very well. Joel does manage to survive, taking a big rising sun kick. Storm Earth and Fire paying dividends right now for Acro allowing him to boost up his damage. Burley finally gets out of the polymorph. And I, I was going to say, this is one of those matchups where you can tell, change my mind, they're really playing into their win condition. They know that eventually in the long game, they will end up winning. It's not necessary for Fried Kitty to be consistently committing his shimmers in order to get polymorphs. And that's one of the things I think mages that are, you know, still learning or not necessarily playing at the highest level really need to consider is sometimes it's not best to be committing those shimmers, trying to go for crowd control the whole game. In a matchup like this, it's much better to just commit a lot of your shimmers to defensive play. Use your Ice Nova to just limit those gap closers, try to create space. Use your Pet Nova to try to, you know, create space, limit their mobility, and just play for the long game. Use your Blizzard, use your Frozen Orb, just snare them up, and eventually in the long game, the Frost Mage plus a really strong melee like a Windwalker Monk, like an Assassination Rogue, you can just take someone down uh, with dampening. You don't necessarily have to go for those long, long crowd control chains. So if you're a newer Mage player, that's definitely something to consider. A touch of death push here from Acro. Curious if he times his grapple weapon right as it explodes. That could be a way to deny Joel's recovery. Doesn't look like it's available. In the meantime, Joel is considering the pursuit or continuing the pursuit onto Fried Kitty. 
I do think they should coordinate the grapple weapon a bit better. It should be activated during their highest points of damage. Fist of Fury, Frozen Orb, Touch of Death. The Death Knight is unable to use Death Strike during those periods and those windows. I think that is the main potential for Change My Mind to get a kill before dampening. And I would like to see Acro time that a bit better or more consistently. The HDK Nation, despite their, I would say, poor cooldown usage at the start of this fight, have maintained their main win condition, which is Bernie and Poike down on mana. So they are doing a better job of babysitting the Druid and making sure that there's someone on the team chasing him down. At the moment, Fuston is trying to go after him by getting polymorphed. He is able to finally reconnect. Ursul's Vortex and Poike using the map effectively, going the long distances on the sides. It's all about Minpoike getting away from the Demon Hunter, so likely he wants to bait Fuston behind a pillar, maybe Cyclone or Entangling and root him. At the moment, seems to be fine, just running around in travel form. Bash into Cyclone. Now Minpoike will likely ask for a Dispel if the disease isn't already even just faded at this point. He is trying to run away and re-stealth, but Demon Hunters can see stealth, so got to be careful here as Fuston moves into the room. Blade Dance pulls Minpoike out. He's not able to regenerate any mana. And basically the most important part of this game right now is Fuston chasing Minpoike, especially before dampening. If Fuston can stay on top of him, or Burley can stay on top of him, and nail as many mana refs as possible, then DHDK Nation will likely overwhelm Change My Mind in dampening. But if they can't stay on top of Minpoike and they can't mana rift him, then in dampening, they're going to be overwhelmed. So even though th that's basically the main point in this fight between these two teams is just all about DHDK's nation, preventing damage from the mage, preventing polymorphs, keeping Minpoike in combat, man and burning him as much as possible. I would say change my mind should be focusing their attentions around using turbo fists and grapple weapon to try and stop the Death Knight from using Death Strike. So this Fist of Fury during the big burst damage of Touch of Death is great, but Fried Kitty is right next to the Death Knight, so he can just Death Strike the mage. Now the grapple weapon is a little bit after their burst damage, so the Death Knight is likely to survive, and now Fried Kitty is on the back foot and has to ice block. Pressure is much higher from DHDK Nation, and they're building a lead that they didn't have in game number one. Yeah, this is actually looking a lot better for DHDK Nation. Fried Kitty doesn't have the same amount of room to sort of run around the map and avoid these burst setups. Really getting caught into paralysis with a polymorph on Fuston. Nice little setup here by Change My Mind. What are they going to be able to get done? And earlier, Sid, you talked about sort of the timing of grapple weapon coming in from Change My Mind. For Joel, he's actually running an honor talent. It's called Transfusion. It's a 45 second cooldown that generates 20 runic power and reduces the runic power cost of Death Strike by 50% for seven seconds. So when you're in an oh no situation, that's an opportunity for you to use the transfusion and heal yourself up. Unfortunately for Joel, that perfectly lines up with Grapple Weapon from Acro, and I really want to see those lined up for Change My Mind to really just completely negate Joel running uh, Joel running that Honor Talent. Poike's mana is not looking too good here, but Fried Kitty is dishing out a ton of damage and secured a counter spell on Burley, denying his heals. Further crowd controlled by Acro, now followed up by Fried Kitty's Polymar. So both Joel and Minpoike could be in a bit of trouble here. Joel on the run, instant interrupt on the Ray of Frost by Fuston, denying some burst damage there. Joel still just chasing down Minpoike. I think that the map selection could have still been better. Hook point would have been much more suited for the strategy, obviously, that DHDK Nation are going to have to employ, or I shouldn't even say have to, It's the, that's what this composition is built to do, is to be highly durable with self-sustainability, be very disruptive to casters, extend games into dampening while using Mana Rift to build a lead and then swing momentum off deep into dampening. So that strategy is much more suited on Black Rock Hold. It's much more suited on Hook Point. Runes of Lordaeron is okay, but I feel like you go to it after those two maps have already been played. This map could give an opening to Minpoike to find a drink, and if it does, then they're going to be down two points in the series on match point. And at that Ooh. period of time, what are you going to do? Minpoike's crossed midfield. Fuston is hunting him down to stop it. Ring of oh, Peace was no. one second too late. Acro almost locking Fuston out of the room, and Minpoike would have got almost full mana if the Ring of Peace was there about one second faster. Yeah, almost able to hold the door. Acro with that Ring of Peace, unfortunately not able to find it. Minpoike gets shut down on that drink. Houston, once again, lands a mana rift. Mpoike's mana is not doing well. Burley has a massive lead at this point. And at 17% dampening, this is when that damage starts to really add up. Right, Kitty trading out that ice block in exchange for a drink coming from Mpoike. Houston, I think he's lost Mpoike. Mpoike can completely recover his mana. It's going to be massive for Change My Mind, and they are able to find it. But now, it's an emergency situation. He has to keep Fried Kitty alive. Iron Bark gets committed. Burley, is he going for an offensive play? No. He's going to be healing up. Realizing you they could do, probably though. find that lead. I don't know. Do you think it's worth committing the purchase? After the iron bark, there's no temporal, there's no ice blocks, there's no iron, there's no defense whatsoever. 
I think if you were going to do a big all-in, it would be at this point in the game onto the mage, but you, you've already lost the mana lead, so maybe do some crowd control him in Poike. Burly, I guess, could drink himself, but wasn't able to get too much off that attempt. Looking to stabilize Joel through the Frozen Orb, using that Spirit Walker's Grace, paired up with the Honor Talent to allow himself to be immune to incoming interrupts. Burley looked like he was positioning to try and disrupt Minpoike, but then walked into uh -oh. a crowd control chain. That's easily going to be Icebound Fortitude. They're trying to slow down the fight by imprisoning Acro, but he connects with the grapple weapon. He trinkets into a stun, has to Icebound Fortitude to connect the Death Strikes. The cooldowns are starting to even out. Mana is fairly even as well, and at this point, it could be anyone's game. Definitely could be, but you can see Touch of Death gets used by Acro. If they can hold on, then Poiki has to keep Fried Kitty alive. He's got the Iron Bark. Is it going to be enough healing? Acro on a solo mission right now. On to Joel. Bash on to Burly. Joel left all alone. No defensive cooldowns whatsoever, but Burly, he's got the Trinket. He's got the Spirit Link. He can get that off. He does manage to commit it, but Joel and Burly, they're still in a lot of trouble. They're just getting cleaved down by the Frozen Orb, by the Blizzard. Acro with a good defensive Ring of Peace denies Joel on reconnecting to Fried Kitty, and this is looking better and better for Change My Mind. I think they've managed to hold on long enough. All right, the cooldowns are even at this point. We're getting to that 40% mark where Joel is just going to become a liability for the team. Double stun from Fuseton. No defense for Fried Kitty for four seconds. When Poike's mana is basically empty at this point, he has one more Iron Bark to go through. Fried Kitty's trying to counterattack with that defense activated, but is dampening high enough to take down Joel here in game number two. Any Magic Shield available as soon as he comes out of the stun. One Death Strike, two Death Strikes. Joel back to full health and recovered. It's now changed my mind on the defensive, oh, but no. Poike's trying to drink while Fried Kitty has nothing to purge off the Temporal oh, Shield instantly. Big mistake. Wow. Beautiful timing there by Burley. Oh. Nice push from DHDK Nation and a lot more solid play on their part overall. I'm not sure how it plays out when the Druid and the Shaman both have full mana at 40% dampening. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how this one does play out. Obviously, the big map picked by Change My Mind, but I mean, on a bigger picture scale, I want to say, like, it, mistakes like that, obviously uncharacteristic of a team like this, but you never see Looney or Chaz making those, those mistakes, like overextending for the drink, getting a little bit too greedy. Is this the sort of thing that can, uh, does set aside the difference between Change My Mind and those top two? I mean, definitely could be. Uh, maybe we can't put all of the blame on Minpoike. I'd have to rewatch the last few moments of that game. I think Fried Kitty may have actually used his mobility to run away from Minpoike, and maybe that was the thing that, you know, allowed them to secure the kill. If Fried Kitty had been in range of Minpoike a little bit sooner, maybe that drink would have actually paid off. So it could just be, you know, a miscommunication between their team. But yeah, mistakes like that in those final moments, when you're playing a game like this and you're waiting till 30, 40% dampening to really play into your win condition, you can't be throwing it away. At 30 40 percent dampening because those are the ma the moments in the game that matter most that was a good push from change my mind timing the grapple weapon around their touch of death explosion while they had a counter spell secured on the healer so perfect cross crowd control right during their burst and that's why they have so much more momentum on joel right now dropping that frozen orb i would almost like to see them potentially coordinate something like ring of peace like this to knock joel away from the mage and then fist of fury so that acro parries the death strike if they can somehow deny three of those death strikes while getting crowd control they're just going to kill the death knight so much more earlier in the match they're playing a lot more aggressive which is probably not expected from dhdk nation as the map is usually utilized for defensive strategies once again beautiful timing with cyclone and grapple weapon unfortunately there was a cooldown to trade but eventually there isn't going to be a cooldown to trade if change my mind keep these crowd control chains up and poike uses shadow meld that drops aggro on the ghoul of joel the ghoul's running back away from in poike and he was able to sit down and drink back to full mana now change my mind can move in and be aggressive and get crowd control and I actually think Change My Mind can close this out before dampening, although it would take a perfect setup, perfect situation. If they can just deny Death Strike from Joel long enough while con crowd controlling Burly, I think that they can win before dampening. This is a big push from Akralal's Fist of Fury and the Frozen Orb, but Burly is positioned inside of the Frozen Orb, so if he gets polymorphed, it will break. Now that the orb is over, Fried Kitty could look for it. Curious to see if he decides to or not. Burley is anticipating crowd control and activates Earthen Wall Totem, so this dusty circle on the ground. While Joel and Fuston stay inside of its perimeter, they will take significantly reduced damage, but Fried Kitty is trying to position so that they have to leave it. As soon as Joel leaves its defense, they stun him up and go for a push and potentially a grapple weapon afterwards to stop him from healing himself, but not going for it just yet. Touch of Death activated. This could be the push for the win if they can crowd control Burly at the same moment that this explodes. Fist of Fury gets stunned instantly by Fuse Tin. Beautifully done. That's going to stop a ton of damage onto Joel, and it's going to be more than enough for him to recover.
Uh, he ultimately will recover from that situation, especially with the ascendance coming in from Burley. More than enough defensive cooldowns to survive, but on this large map, it's just really difficult. Now, Sid, I wanted to kind of ask you about big picture. You know, we talked a lot about how Rogue, Mage, Restoration Druid, their strategy for taking down these Demon Hunter Death Knight teams is just go after the healer. Do you feel like on a smaller map, if we did go to hook point, it would be better for Change My Mind to lock in that Rogue Mage so they could kind of play into that strategy and play a little bit more aggressive and not have to rely on deep dampening to take down Joel? I mean, it would be a good curveball, but even the Rogue Mage Druids that we've seen against the Shaman version, not the Druid, we're also winning and dampening with crowd control on the Shaman interrupts on the Shaman. So, I mean, it's still going to be the same strategy, but it's a weaker employed one with the Rogue versus the Windwalker. I suppose if they wanted to, because they can just go to Ashamanes in game five, if they lose in the small map, they could pick something hyper aggressive and try to turn the map in their own favor, uh, assuming that they win this one and we go to hook point afterwards. So that's definitely something to take into consideration, but I feel like changed my mind. The fact that they're going with this composition so consistently is that they want to get better at it and they want to use it as a tool in their arsenal. So they're not just pigeonholed into only playing Rogue Mage or Shadow Priest Rogue. At the moment, Nipoike is being harassed by Fuston. Fuston denying a lot of Cyclone casts and finally nailing some mana rifts. They're going to need to stay on top of Nipoike, better manage their pets using that ghoul or potentially the skeletal archer, keeping that on Minpoike and attacking Minpoike so that he cannot slip away and drink, have Burley in position to snipe him with some totems every once in a while, or the earth elemental, because they have a significant lead at this point. They just have to keep it. Yep. Need to keep that lead, secure that mana. Minpoike still trying to kite away from Houston. Finally, Fried Kitty able to back him up just a little bit with Polymorphs, and that's what we really need to see from Fried Kitty. He needs to use his Water Elemental Freeze, that ranged Pet Nova like we just saw, to lock down Fuston. Now there's an opportunity. Minpoike can cross the map. This is when Fried Kitty and Acro, they really have to back up. Minpoike allow him to go for these drinks while keeping crowd control onto Fuston. But now, DHDK Nation, they're looking to get aggressive on Fried Kitty. This is going to be a lot of offensive cooldowns committed. Fried Kitty, is he going to be able to survive? Trinket Temporal Shield, he's still trying to run away. Minpoike going to be going for a drink. If he can get that, if he can reset his mana at this point in the game, it's basically the best moment for that. Right as dampening is kicking in, you'll have a full mana pool. And I, I think if Change My Mind, they're going to be able to do it. This is a large map paying off for Change My Mind, but just have to be careful. You can't wait too long. Once again, Iron Bark should be enough to keep Pride Kitty nice and healthy. He wants to hold on to both of those ice blocks, ice block and the cold snap uh, for a little bit longer in the game. So he has them at that 30, 40% dampening mark. You might be wondering why Minpoike is running the Feral Affinity. We don't really see him attacking a lot, but it also gives you 15% movement speed. And Demon Hunters actually don't have a reliable way of snaring a target. So if it's ever Fused in versus Minpoike running around a pillar with that travel form and the boosted mobility from the Feral Affinity, Minpoike can just outrun the Demon Hunter. And that's the main reason why you run the Feral Affinity in this matchup. It's not so you go and catch from an attack, because if you did, you would just be mana rifted on cooldown. You'd be stunned on cooldown and pressured. You're using it because the extra mobility just lets you outrun the Demon Hunter when it becomes a one versus one. Stuns too, right? And well, yeah, if you can, but even that's if you get a resell, it's really difficult to get the stuns. Them. He's only been able to get even one in the matchup. I think it's just better to stay as far away from the Demon Hunter and just use it to outrun and drag the fight out until deeper. At least with the strategy that they're playing, that would be the best way of doing it. And Poike is in a solid position, even on mana at 10% dampening, 30% away from that magic marker where the Death Knight just kind of disappears from the game. It may as well say, like, slash delete Death Knight when the 4-0 number appears on the top of <laughs> I the screen. I, I swear, that's what happens every time. We get 40% and then the Death Knight is dead, so give or take one percent it might take a little bit longer a little bit earlier but around 40 percent is when the death knight eventually does become overwhelmed there we see the stun utilized from Imparke's feral affinity onto the shaman preventing some heals acro yet lulz is using his grapple weapon on joel during touch of death for a big push to try and force even more cooldowns or potentially a kill burley still unable to heal if he has to pop that spearling totem before we get closer to 40 percent it's almost guaranteed to be game over now cycloned on his ascendance fiustin's trying to stall using imprison on acro Stop Stopping him from attacking. Joel's gripping Fried Kitty into the pillar, so if he needs to death strike, he can, or if he needs to retreat away, he can. Looks like they're trying to push forward towards Acrolol and Fried Kitty. I'm wondering what target we're going to see DHDK Nation go after because they've gotten no ice blocks so far. Definitely need to start working towards those. Fuston is chasing down Minpoike. This is where the mobility of the Feral Affinity really gets to shine. Minpoike gets stunned up. Trinkets to dodge Mana Rift, but gets interrupted on the Cyclone. Good denial by Fuston, but. He's not going to be able to keep up the chase. Burley is so far away. Fuston 
unlikely to leave these polymorphs for some time. So this is going to be a reset. And Poike Shadow melds aggro from the ghoul and then drinks back to full right at the halfway mark to 40%. So I do anticipate we'll see Icebound Fortitude forced within roughly the next one or three setups. And then afterwards, it's game over. Changed my mind. I've just played the map out. DHDK Nation don't really have any options. They've tried to, but with the Shadow Meld from Mpoike, the Dispel from Acro, they can't keep him in combat long enough. Joel is grapple weapon. This is the big push to try and get cooldowns before that 40% mark. Burley's pinned against the wall for a couple of seconds and not able to heal. Joel's runic power still in a good spot, though. He's got enough for two death strikes. That should be enough to sustain the grip fried kitty in and stun him, imprison on the Fist of Fury. That could be one way if DHD Nation focus all their attentions on interrupting Fist of Furies with stuns. That could be a way to slow down the game for Burley to recover, but it's already becoming overwhelming. They get the Icebound Fortitude exactly when they need to. Touch of Death is rotating back up and available. Counter spell up in about 20, so they might not even need it. Gladiator's Maledict, Joel's Death Strikes are limited. Burley has the Spearling Totem. We're not at that game over 40% mark, and they basically burned every cooldown. They still have darkness to work with. They've managed to get Touch of Karma from Acro, so maybe they're going to go after him when he overextends, but Touch of Death is about to explode. Counterspell's available in one second. They use the darkness, but I think they got a bit unlucky. A lot of damage going through the darkness. Joel can't use Death Strike. He's disarmed. If Burley gets interrupted here, it's game over. It's all about the counterspells onto Burley. Can Fried Kitty land one? If he does, then it's going to be GG, but if he misses the counterspell, then Joel will likely recover. Instead, going for a Polymorph, much safer. No reverse magic. Flurry combos in, and they are going to be getting the kill very very early with perfect crowd control on to Burley. Change my mind. Take game number. That's another one of those things, you know, in 8.2, Shadow Priest are getting some rather large nerfs in PvP, so that could be a class that Villai needs to be picking up a little bit, swapping over some of his, but we will see him on the Shadow Priest here. They won on 12 run. Now they're looking to flush DHDK out of the tournament and Dalaran Suez. They use Hammer of Justice on the Demon Hunter, who's overextended out of line of sight, and they're actually running Mind Bomb, so I anticipate that Change My Mind are going to go for the crowd control chain strategy, but I don't think it's going to work, especially not before dampening. I mean, a Demon Hunter and a Death Knight will easily outheal any damage you do if you've got zero Mortal Strike effect. So unless Valet's running Siphine, which would easily be killed off, he's not even running it, so there's no Mortal Strike. There's no healing reduction. If you don't have healing reduction or dampening, you're not even going to dent a Demon Hunter or a Death Knight. So this strategy doesn't make any sense to me. I would much prefer or change my mind to be aggressive on top of Burley, try and use the small map in their own favor with this composition and catch him by surprise. But right now, they seem reluctant to do it, instead focusing on dragging Fusedin and Joel around the staircase and out of line of sight of Burley so that he is exposed to polymorph casts or mind bombs as a silence mind bomb chain is engaged from Change My Mind. The setup is clean. I mean, that was basically flawless. Silence mind bomb, full polymorph, but it's a demon hunter and he's taking zero damage. So I'd, if you've played perfectly two setups in a row and you've got no significant cooldowns, no real momentum or pressure, you have to change your strategy. I mean, I, I think that's fair to say. Joel now in a polymorph. Houston still just marching towards Vinpoike, trying to land those mana rifts. If we look at mana, we've kind of talked about for Demon Hunter DK Nation, it's all about the mana rifts on Vinpoike consistently. They've been doing a good job shutting it down with things like Leap of Faith coming in from Valet uh, to, you know, bring Vinpoike out of that mana rift circle. But it's just inevitable. On this small map, I feel like Vinpoike is going to be eating these mana rifts consistently and Demon Hunter Death Knight will eventually get a lead. They're trying to pressure down Fuston. Mind Bomb on Burley. Is there going to be a follow-up crowd? Burley does get the Polymorph, but Belay's the one that's in trouble. Has to use the Fade. Mpoike, where's the heals? Greater Sacrifice comes in, and that will keep Belay alive, but that's a lot of defensive cooldowns. Changed my mind, had to trade out. Mpoike used Divine Shield before getting... Oh, no, sorry. He was used his Shield Wall, now Divine Shield to avoid being mana rifted. They've used their cooldowns to avoid mana rifts, and it looks like they're trying to play for a late-game kill focused around crowd control, but these classes against the setup that they're running are effectively going to take zero damage on top of having defensive cooldowns. So they're not even getting the cooldowns. They're actually the ones dying on their crowd control. I mean, the Shaman is in a polymorph, and Valet is the one who is dead. So I feel like this has now been four or five setups of clean crowd control in the Shaman, and it's actually them who are falling behind. If, if that At that point, it hasn't signaled that this isn't working. They're also losing on mana, so even with life grip and mind controls, uh, such as this one right here, and Poike is still burning his mana faster than Burly. Burly in position to maybe look for some cheeky crowd control. Fried Kitty will trink it, but Valet is just dying to damage, and Poike can't even heal through just the sustained pressure. 
Fried Kitty's trying to set up some moves here by Polymorphine Burley. Hammer of Justice, Icebound Fortitude. A bit of a mistake here from Joel at Fuston, using Reverse Magic and Icebound Fortitude at the same time. You want to be using one or the other on that. That Icebound Fortitude really wasn't answering any cooldowns. I think it was unnecessary if Fuston was able to remove Polymorph. So maybe there is potential of DHDK Nation throw, but that's asking a lot. Like they would have to screw up some pretty big cooldowns so far to lose the lead that they've got. Yeah, changed my mind in a really awkward situation right now. They're falling further and further behind. Belay, he's getting tunneled down. Hex now on a fried kitty, and there's no counter Hex to spell. That's one of the problems. Burley can actually land that crowd control onto fried kitty. Minpoike can't dispel it off. Here's a stun into a manor. If once again, Minpoike getting further and further behind. And Sid, like you said, they committed so many of their defensive cooldowns. Minpoike, he doesn't have too many safety nets left. If Joel and Fuston could get him behind, catch him in an interrupt and swap to him, and Poike could just fall down. The only thing Change My Mind has going for them right now is that void shift coming in from Belay, that life swap opportunity that could potentially keep in Poike alive. Yeah, so Burley sits through another perfect crowd control chain. Joel makes it out pretty much unscathed. Minpoike is being pressured, and he's incredibly low on mana. If he gets dispelled with a consumed magic from the Demon Hunter and one of these divine favors, he could even just get KO'd by the Demon Hunter. Fried Kitty is just ice blocking, potentially to bait his opponents onto him instead of Valet and open himself up to get some casts. Once again, Mind Bomb on Burly. Polymorph being casted. Not going to land for just a second. Reverse magic available. Fuston right there. Fuston immediately using Metamorphosis to close the gap. Stop Minpoike from regenerating mana. Now Minpoike has to come back and heal two targets. They dispel the Divine Favor and interrupt Minpoike. Beautifully timed there from Fuston. Now there's a lot of pressure on nice. two targets. Valet is stunned on his mind control. Minpoike is imprisoned into a mana rift. And I mean, the HDK Nation are just playing the winning strategy and change my mind or just letting them do it. I mean, I think the matchup is probably favored towards DHDK Nation overall, but they've been going for the same thing over and over and over, and it's just been getting worse and worse. They need to mix it up, but I think it's too little too late. Ooh, voice shift comes in. Now Valet is wide open target for DHDK Nation. They can go after Minpoike. They can go after Valet. What is Minpoike going to do? He's got no mana left. Holy Light, he's got his Avenging Wrath up, but oh, pre. not that much he can really do. The pre-anti-magic zone is going to be limiting all of that damage. Joel's going to be completely fine. Minpoike trying to escape once again, but Fuston, he's been all over him. And honestly, Fuston's been playing really well in this matchup so far, denying Minpoike every step of the way. We are just stepping foot into dampening and Change My Mind does not have many openings. All right, if he gets dispelled on the Divine Favor again, I, I think it's pretty much game over. Valet is going to be just swatted down onto the ground and splatted like a bug at this point. Divine Shield from Inpoike is immune to crowd control and interrupts, but he's got zero mana left. Valet is basically just going to be typing slash AFK at this point because there should be absolutely no way he makes it out alive. And... I mean, it was expected that DHDK Nation would take this with two just around the corner, and that might be the opportunity they need. But I think on this map with this composition, if Change My Mind just plays it out the way it should be played out, this is definitely going to be a win for them. Change My Mind are still overall behind in point standings comparatively to Method Black and to Wildcard Gaming. So they desperately need a spot at the Summer Finals. So losing out this early on in the rounds, only I think a top six or top eight finish, that's, that is not good for them they need to be getting a lot higher placings than that although they have set themselves up for what i think should be an easy win on their part ashen mains fall they got the windwalker mage match up and poike likely running feral affinity will be playing max range kiting away from the demon hunter drinking resetting mana playing for that game winning play at around 25 to 40 percent dampening where they can run the death out of cooldowns burn him down to the ground when his death strike is a lot less potent so it's going to be up to dhd canation how can they stop change my mind from stalling how can they stop them from getting to that point they need to do a perfect job of preventing Minpoike from getting drinks keeping their pressure on him at all times if they even leave him open for a moment they are inevitably going to lose this matchup yeah, Fuston's all over Minpoike at this point. It's up to Fuston. What is he going to be able to get done? He needs to land the stuns in the mana rifts consistently in this matchup. They get Minpoike out of mana. He's already committed his trinket. And Poike in all of these games is very willing to just trade out a trinket to avoid a mana rift and do that as often as possible. It ends up being a decent amount of mana you can hold on to throughout the course of a game. Burley now into full cycle, and Joel could be in a little bit of trouble, but Death Strike at this point with Earthenwall Totem is going to be more than enough to keep him alive. I mean, finally able to stabilize just a little bit. Imprisonment now over onto Minpoike. Houston once again landing the mana rift, and this is looking a lot better than what we saw coming out of them on the Grand Arena.
So far, it's looking, I would say, about even. I feel like the cooldowns forced from Change My Mind are pretty crucial. They already got Icebound Fortitude, and with one clean attempt with a grapple weapon, if Joel isn't careful, I, I do see him dying before dampening in that one specific situation. Although it would take a lot of things going wrong at the same time for it to happen, it is possible, and if it does, then Joel doesn't have what his answer should, would be in the situation, Icebound Fortitude. So there is gonna be a bit of pressure on DHDK Nation. Although Fuston is doing a, a lot better job, I feel like he's maybe channeling his inner trill this game, getting a lot more pressure on Minpoike, keeping him in combat. We see the Ray's Abomination even used by Joel onto Minpoike, so sending every single ghoul in the ghoulish army of the Death Knight to chase down Minpoike. He should not be worried about maxing out his damage. The main objective should be stopping Minpoike from drinking and landing mana rifts, so sending your entire army essentially at Minpoike is the best move even if you lose some damage uh, over time damage per second to do it because you will just tap him out and I mean eventually Fuston will be able to solo Minpoike if he gets him out of mana. Fried Kitty's trying to support by polymorphine Fuston very far away from Burly. The Minpoike then moves in and cross crowd controls the shaman right during a big push and that actually nets them the trinket spirit link totem which will be consequential later in the game, but at this period of time, I'm not sure. It does actually allow DHD Nation to play more aggressively. Perhaps it's what they need to do, because a lot of the times they're holding onto their cooldowns until those last couple of pushes. They stay alive, but then after they're over, they lose. So maybe using their defensive cooldowns to stay aggressive, stay on top of Minpoike is a good answer and potentially an adaptation that changed my mind weren't ready for. Yeah, Minpoike is actually struggling here. Fuston's all over him. He's gotten him low. Look at Minpoike's mana. It's not doing well. And Minpoike hasn't been able to drink so far in this matchup. Another imprisonment, potentially into a mana rift, going to land from Fuston. Fried Kitty really hasn't been able to back him up much in this matchup and the positioning from change my mind hasn't been great fraud kitty he needs to be able to help out Mpoike with the pet nova with the pet freeze on to fuston to slow him down with the ice novas but Mpoike, he's just never been able to get away from fuston in this matchup and this is a big adaptation coming in from demon hunter death knight nation and i think this could be a win for them Mpoike, look at him he's falling behind he's got the iron bark he's got the bark skin but dk dk nation demon hunter dk nation are all over them yeah, I think that changed my mind. We're not anticipating this aggressive strategy and cooldown management, and now the series could actually be out of their hands, and DHDK Nation looking to advance, and this is a big deal. Change my mind, need as many points as qual to qualify to the Summer Finals. They're so far behind in the overall point standings. Sure, it might not have a big impact in this season, but if they are looking to rely on qualifying on points, if they lose here, it opens opportunity for Zizon or Diabolus to potentially move forward and pass them. And we were talking about their power rankings in the European scene, and they're being tossed around like ragdolls right now by DHDK Nation coming in clutch here in oh, game no. five. I, I was expecting this to be an easy win for Change My Mind, but just look, three players, sub 50% health. Burley still has a significant amount of mana, and Poike has absolutely nothing. It almost makes me wonder if DHDK Nation were throwing on Tolveron Arena to then bait Change My Mind into this situation because they're just about to lose. I don't know about that. Wow. But this is this is completely feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history. The longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.